This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a domain, website, online store or simply a nice platform to showcase your photography, you can make your next move with Squarespace. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code MATTHIAS to get 10% off your first purchase. The Fuji X-T2 is a lovely camera that's being praised all over the internet, and I agree with all of them. It's great, wonderful, awesome, I recommend it, etc. and so forth. But here are 5 reasons why I didn't keep it, and is instead trying my luck with the X-Pro2. It's almost the same camera with a few exceptions. The sensor and image quality is identical. The sharpness and detail is impressive in both. And the high resolution has loads of room for post cropping. The dynamic range is very high and you can push the shadows like there's no tomorrow. And for me the sensor puts out true magic if you bump the ISO up to 4000 or thereabout. So great cameras indeed, but let's get into why I prefer the X-Pro2 over the X-T2. First off, the grip. I hated the grip on the otherwise lovely X-T10. And even though the X-T2 is much much better, I mean miles ahead, I still can't seem to get along with it. I guess it's because I'm used to rangefinder style bodies or huge bulky grips. I'm not much for the in-between kind of size. No such issue on the X-Pro2. Add a thumbs up and it's just like holding a Leica. Very comfortable. Add a Leica M-mount lens and the kip and adapter with close focus and any Leica shooter will feel right at home. Except for the smaller sensor and lack of an actual rangefinder, that is. Next we have the handling. What bugged me the most is that the shutter button is obstructed by the exposure compensation. This is one button that should never be obstructed in my opinion. Much better for my hands on the X-Pro2, which also is more suited for using the thumb, something I do a lot on the streets. Another thing is that the for my hands absolutely most accessible button on the X-T2 that I definitely would have wanted programmed as the exposure lock is the quick menu, which of course isn't programmable. Instead I have to use the front button, which isn't nice at all since it forces me to reposition my grip. And that is something where Fuji really should step up their game on both cameras. Customizability. Compared to something like a Ricoh or Sony, the camera is far too limited in terms of what functions you can map to function buttons. Not being able to choose freely where the exposure lock and push focus is, is annoying to say the least. Even the video is easier to access on the Pro since you don't need to switch drive mode. Now I know the HD from the Pro is lovely but it can't match the 4K from the X-T2. And that awesome two-way tilt screen is very nifty for video. But I only use the video for simple stuff, anything serious and I would use a real video camera. Mm -hmm. 
Next reason is the inconsistency of the overall excellent build. The body feels solid, most of the dials are snappy and tactile. The door for the SD card is nice and secure, but then the other door for the connections feels so cheap and flimsy. With that said, I do get that cameras nowadays need a soft plastic spot for the Wi-Fi signal to get through. Worst of all is the drive and focus mode colors. They are so fiddly and easy to get wrong, it's almost unbearable. I wouldn't want to rely on them in the field if I was a fast action shooter. No such feelings on the X-Pro2, here all the buttons are equally nice. The only one that feels a little bit off is the shutter button, which is very wiggly if I attach a soft release. Second to last we have the viewfinder. Ok, it's nice, the refresh rate is great, it's big and bright. But it's comparable to other brands and it's an EVF only. It has pretty long and annoying blackouts and the placement in the middle makes the rest of the camera into an obstruction for my left eye. I shoot my cameras like I do rifles, both eyes open scouting for the next kill. The X-Pro2 lets me do that with the awesome, excellent, super great and fantastic hybrid viewfinder. And having the choice of an optical or electronic at any given time with just a flick of a switch? That is awesome and all cameras should have it. The final reason why I ditched the X-T2 is a weird one. It's the X-T20. Its grip might suck, but so does the X-T2s. The only features it lacks are things I personally don't need. I've used the X-T2 professionally, and I haven't really needed any of those little extra things that let's say a sports photographer would use. So I will keep shooting with the X-Pro2 for a while. Like with all cameras, there are of course a bunch of negatives as well, but that goes without saying. Check out my other videos, follow me on Instagram for new pictures every day. Until next time, goodbye. This video was brought to you by Squarespace. At squarespace.com you find everything you need to start a nice page. Just use their domain search engine and one of their award-winning templates. It's all super easy to set up, very flexible and customizable. And if you ever need help, they offer 24-7 customer service. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and enter offer code MATTHIAS to get 10% off your first purchase.